welcome to another episode of This is America, and we have on... Kiera. Kiera, okay. So, Kiera is here to join us for another episode. Thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody for listening, regardless on what streaming platform you're on, um, Spotify, Apple Music. If you're watching this on YouTube, hope it looks great. And, yeah, so, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. It was a long day, but it's okay. What job do you do? Um, so I am a financial services representative. Um, okay. For the credit union. Which okay. Which is basically a fancy way of saying um, I'm a teller slash member service because they're really trying to they're trying to merge a lot of jobs like different jobs into like the same role. Okay. So teller and banker, if you will. Okay. Teller yeah. and banker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got you. Got you. That's what I do by day. Okay. What about by night? Because why'd you specify that? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um. Well. I'm a designer by passion. Okay. Um, I went to school for fashion design um, and marketing, so I love to sew. Okay. I love to like make patterns and drape and just create really cool garments to wear. Um, Why are you downplaying? <laughs> I mean, um, because because it's kind of it's easy to me. I feel like it's just easy to do. I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, even though like. The more I meet people and talk to people, I realize it's like kind of a more of a lost art. Okay. Um, but it's so easy to me. So it's like maybe everybody sews. <laughs> Nobody sews. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. What's up though? Yeah. Okay. So how long you been doing that? Because you mean we're talking about designs and patterns. Like that's uh, you're thinking that is easy. You got to be doing that for a minute. Well, um, it all started. At 12, with just a sketch. So I started sketching first. Okay. Um, so I probably, was, yeah, around 12, was, what, seventh grade. Um, and my mom, of course, then I had no idea. I didn't learn until I was grown that, like, she was passionate about this and she just never pursued it. Okay. She kind of wrote it off as a hobby. I don't know why she never thought she should tell me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my aunt told me. For sure. Here. Okay. Um, she taught me how to hand sew. Okay. This was before we ever like had a sewing machine in the house or anything. Mm. So she would let me like my you know shirts or something would get old, and you know she would let me just kind of create new stuff with them. Okay. Um, like I take t-shirts and make like tank tops out of them and stuff like that using like uh, hair scrunchies and stuff. Hair scrunchies? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's different. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where the interest started, mm. and. Um, then I was able to take um, an actual sewing class my sophomore year of high school. Okay. And it just took off from there. Gotcha. So, like, I, that's when I learned how to use a sewing machine. And okay. I learned how to use patterns for the first time. Of course, okay. I was making my own patterns then. Yeah, I yeah. I learned it through college. Okay. Um, but, yeah. So, okay, first of all, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I know. I'm going to try to, look, I mean, I'm going to try to talk slow. I'm country, so I speak. Ain't no problem. Yeah, I feel you. Try to slow down. Okay. I appreciate you. The audience appreciates you. <laughs> so, first, your mom sewed first, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think that's kind of intriguing just because a lot of the stuff that our parents do, right, is kind of passed on through the children, whether they know it or not, right? So, it runs into this theory that other people have, other scientists have, which is like, um, some of that stuff is in your DNA, is in your genes, you know? And so as that's passed down through lineage, you still keep that same uh, skill, right? And whether the people down the line can start to use it or not is them, you know? But it's still kind of there as like a latent ability, right? So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And my grandma, she, she could sew as well. Mm. Um, again. So it's in the family. Yeah, but no one <laughs> thought it was important enough to tell the one person who wanted to go to school for design, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like the one person who's there actually trying to do something with it, right. you know. Like everybody else, it was maybe a hobby or something like a pastime. Yeah. But we have one person in the family who's actually taking it serious and yeah. maybe trying to do something great with it, you know. So I think people still were having eyes on you. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I do, I do have to consider their focus especially for their generations, had to be money. Mm. And so if it wasn't making money, it wasn't going to make sense mm. for them, which is why I think no matter like how talented they were at it and how interested and um, passionate they were about it, mm. if, it if it couldn't bring in money, they, they weren't going to waste time with it. 
Mm. So, of course, fast forward to me, and I'm at the time I'm not even thinking about money. I'm just like, I just want to do it because I love it. <laughs> it makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I guess that was that was kind of my take on it. Okay. Okay. That's cool though. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit different whenever you realize that being able to have time allows you to be able to improve skill, you know, and to really dwell on talent, right? Talent isn't so much of a focus, like you said, whenever you have real life problems, right? So talent isn't really gonna pay the bills whenever it's not making money. So that's another thing when that goes back to what I was talking about, like the people in your family who did have that skill but weren't able to utilize it still looked at you as one, we've allowed her to be able to have the time to be able to make this into a talent, and two, like, she's actually being able to go forth and do something with it, you know? So, other people might have been living through you, you know? It's kind of powerful. Good point, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, yes. <laughs> but, okay, so, we're fast-forwarding to school, right? Mm -hmm. So, being able to have a class that shows is like not a thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel about that? Like people used to be able to have woodworking classes mm -hmm. and all these other different types of classes that kind of worked into different fields where you found out what you actually wanted to do, you know? So it's not a thing anymore. Of course I have no proof, but I have suspicion. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just, I feel like it's just, it's kind of pulling us away from those skills that would allow us to support ourselves mm. and at the same time like help other people mm. um so i guess my thought process is like if you're if you're kind of trying to take away those types of those types of skills then what are you trying to push us to, towards mm. if that makes sense gotcha um because like i remember like you said woodworking mm. they had a mechanics class mm. Um, they had a cooking class, which I wouldn't, I wasn't able to take that, but you know, I had my, had my cooking from home, but still, <laughs> yeah. but, um, sewing class. And I think they, they actually had a class called life skills or something. Really? Um, okay. High school. So like you said, like fast forward to now, none of that exists as a part of curriculum. And it's like, well, why, why would you take that out? Yeah. Like what would be the, 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 um. The cause. The cause and the purpose for that. Yeah. And I just, if just looking back to previous generations, we want to look at our parents, grandparents. At that time, it was very important and it was heavily pushed to have a trade and to have a skill. Mm. Um, maybe more so than to attend a college or university, obviously for, you know, economic reasons. Yeah. Um, a lot of things going on in society i get it it's different yeah for sure but everybody had a skill and a trade mm. everybody had something that they could do themselves for themselves and their families mm. um and like you said a lot of times it was passed down like great granddaddy did this mm -hmm. and granddaddy did that and granddaddy taught daddy to do this and daddy taught his sons you know what i mean yeah where is that it's not a thing anymore, yeah. you know? And one of the few, I guess, like, classes, at least in my um, previous high school, that was held was a computer class, you know? And kind of pushing people towards that digital era. You know, as we go more digital and um, things are more technology-based, like, there's not so much of a focus on using your hands, you know? Because in reality how many people are using their hands now you know there's a lot of things that are computer based there are a lot of things that are ai based so uh there's not that much of a need anymore so a lot of people can say for example the olden ways to do things and i sound really young but like <laughs> the old ways to, <laughs> the old ways to do things might have been the better way you know because maybe there was more of a, what's the word? Fulfillment of life that way. Because thinking about, for example, you going about and learning and wanting to learn how to uh, sew and stuff like that. And this is a passion that you had. And there was an actual class that could 
cultivate that passion that you had that makes you into a whole different person than if you were like there wasn't that particular cat class and then you had to be forced into technology you know or you just didn't have a outlet at all right you know so then if you don't have an outlet you might go to other things etc cetera, etc cetera, or you just might never express this whole different person that you could have been there's a myriad of different people that we could be given the different outcomes and different pathways that we have open and available to us you know so which is why I feel like having a good high school and having a um, place that can cultivate whatever that child wants to learn is really important but I digress <laughs> well, I, well, I was, I was going to say back to what you were saying when you mentioned that um, basically people don't use their hands mm. anymore the scary thing about it is people don't use their brains anymore either that's facts <laughs> that's um, facts and it's it would be nice in a perfect world if we could just have that perfect balance of the old ways and technology <laughs> yeah um because i do think that they can coexist like in a healthy way i, I think both ways are important because mm. i'll be honest with you like not you know once i had my my one and only internship in fashion okay and i kind of i got turned off from it because i'm gonna be honest i didn't get the job okay um and the only one a lot of us didn't get the job yeah but <laughs> that was that's when I learned that it was more politics. It was mm. more about who you know than what you know. And I've been mm. warned about that, but mm. I had to see it for myself. Yeah. So it kind of made me a little sour. Mm. Um, even though it, it continued to be a passion of mine, I didn't pursue it in a competitive manner mm -hmm. to keep up. But technology has affected that field yeah. tremendously. Mm. And so, I mean, even if I wanted to, to pick it back up, you know, more competitive way mm. I would be behind in the technology part of it really um, because I'm all I'm just hands on mm. you know I can take what I have here and create it you know mm. without a computer yeah um, but the use of a computer is a lot faster yeah 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 you know <sighs> and I'm not bad myself but I'm not a computer yeah <laughs> you yeah know? exactly so it's weird it is <laughs> it's, it's weird <laughs> it definitely is like if you want to try to mass produce something mm -hmm. you're gonna need a computer that's right you know that's and right. so in order to really become wealthy off of a uh, skill like that right you need technology right um at least in this day and age yeah. and so one thing though that shouldn't go um just go by mm -hmm. is just the fact that that care and that love that you put inside of the different threads that you're sewing together, et cetera, like all of that still isn't lost to people. Right. You know, there was this one, uh, there's this one episode on HBO Max mm -hmm. and it was about, and I forget the actual name of the show. It was about fashion, right? And there was these different designers and they were going in and um, it's basically like a competition of who had the best, I guess outfits, you know, and I love watching the show. It showed people's creativity in real time. Like, how fast can you come up with this? Like, how great can you can this be? You know, and one of the things that was really emphasized was the different art forms. Right. And you didn't have a computer, you know, you had like your machine and your press and et cetera, et cetera. You know, you had your different fabrics and colors, et cetera. But there was no way that you could try to mass produce it and make it quicker. You know, you had to make up this design, you know, and of course, like you're sketching it on like an iPad or something. But you're making this design and you're trying to um, just like piece it together in real time, you know. And so the person who won really stood out to me just because all of his sweaters were handmade. And it made, it drove up the cost of his sweaters, especially after he won the, the competition. But it drove up the cost. I think a sweater was going for like $500 at the minimum, you know? But on every single one, it was his signature on every single one. Like you could tell how much time and effort he put into that, you know? So, and I forget the man's name. I think it was like John Mensinger or something along those lines. But yeah, like there's a balance, you know? And I think as people are going about and they're 
trying new things and the new things that were before are getting old, they're starting to try to, to revert back because the world is in cycles, you know? And so, of course, we had that cycle of technology and of mass producing cookie cutter stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But I think we're getting back to design, like actual design, actual effort, actual love that's being put inside of a craft because you can feel that, you know? And I don't think computers, I don't care what they do to them, it's never going to replace that. Exactly. People get very, very scared, you know, but it's all going to go back. And you just have to have faith in that, you know? So, honestly, there might be room for you at one point. Oh, yeah. You I, never I, know. I will make room. Exactly. <laughs> I am listening. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. But, yeah. So, now we're past high school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did we end up in, like, being a banker? Bills. Mm. <laughs> um, more than that, though. At one point, I would say earlier on, definitely in the college days, I just... I was such a rebel. I okay. didn't listen to anything. <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> listen to. I didn't listen to anybody. I shouldn't listen to. Um, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, mm. which was just create. Um, I used to say all the time, I don't care about the business side. You know, that's not what I'm good at. I'm good at this side. It's not easy to say that. Listen. And then, <laughs> and then when you grow up, you're like, how are you going to create the business out of it if you don't know business? Exactly. So I never wanted to focus on the money. Mm. Um or the business side of things because I wanted to put, you know, 100% into the design aspect. And that taught me a lot of hard lessons mm-hmm. in life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think me being, well, me having the job that I have is by accident. I know it's a part of the design of mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. because um, not only am I forced to consider business but i actually have to apply it in my life to make it work yeah yeah and um it's really opened my eyes in a lot of ways i guess because of my lack of balance at that time in my life Mm -hmm. when i was younger i thought it had to be all or or nothing and and all me everything that i wanted at the time (laughs) okay (laughs) whether it was good or bad yeah um not considering balance and that the creative side can coexist with the business yeah you know, I used to always say, well, I'll just hire a business partner. How are you going to get to that point? Exactly. <laughs> you don't know money. Like, exactly. You know, it's just... Exactly. So I love my job. I love what I do. I, I mean, I wouldn't be hesitant to call it a career, but it would have to be part of my career because design is still my career, too. So okay. It's, it's all of it. Okay. Um, so you're actively designing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why you sound the same? <laughs> no, because... I, I'm, I'm different about it now. I love it now. Mm. Um, I used to like before. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't. I didn't have honest intentions about it. I knew I was good at it, mm. but I wanted more of the acknowledgement from people. Okay. And I wanted more of the attention from people. Okay. Which was completely wrong. Yeah. Now I just love it because it's a part of me. Yeah. And it's like I embrace it as expression mm. before i just wanted attention mm. Mm. so let's move it to recognition okay <laughs> <laughs> because yes attention right but attention and recognition goes hand in hand recognition is praise for your work because it's something that's you personally feel proud of right and you just want other people to also feel proud of what you felt proud of continue i'm sorry yeah no you're, yeah i mean that's it um, but the thing is, Ben, I wanted people to feel a way about it that, to be honest, I couldn't really feel about it because I wouldn't give my 100%. Because mm-hmm. I had everything, I was, I had everything else going on, again, wrong intentions. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, as much as I would say, oh, well, you know, I don't care about the business side of things, I don't care about the money. Yeah. But I got upset when I couldn't make money from it. Mm-hmm. And I would get upset because I had to work like, maybe two or three jobs and I'm like well why can't I just you know design and get money that way you yeah. know what I mean like it yeah. was just it was just a contradiction it was just a big ball of contradiction for sure and so I, I took a lot of time off um, to me it was a lot of time mm-hmm. I had to take some time off and um, step away and get my foundation together mm-hmm. because I was trying to build on sand mm. it's not going that's a different way of putting it. I like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. I just, I was just trying to build fast. Mm-hmm. And without a foundation. Right. 
without a solid foundation and um as you know as smart as I was I still you know I was looking at all the instant success of people social media was a was another big thing I don't I don't I'm not knocking it and I don't blame social media I just I didn't understand it the way I do now and how mm-hmm. to use it mm-hmm. for good okay um so seeing everybody you know and all their instant success and all this stuff I just wanted to get there yeah yeah but I wasn't earning it yeah you know because I wouldn't focus on the work you know and <laughs> like therapy. Ooh, <laughs> you know what? You're good. <laughs> really? Okay. I appreciate you. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I felt something. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> but honestly, like, and it's it's actually interesting that you mentioned social media, just because social media can v- twist the way that a perception of things, right? Into thinking that everything that this person got or etc cetera, etc cetera, was just spontaneous you know a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't want to post just because it's the nitty-gritty you know and that's not the things that are going to get the likes or the attention etc cetera, etc cetera, because you're showing your losses as well it's a lot of loss when it comes to art and so when you talk about you not wanting to know the business side just because you wanted to put in 100 and 200 percent into your art that's the downfall of a lot of artists you know because you get so enthralled in your passion to where you feel like it's kind of um what is it for the lack of terms what music artists say selling your soul if you're going to do it through a business side etc etc you know um and that's not the case there's two sides of putting something out there you know you need to be able to market you need to be able to have a good business plan to have a good strategy uh who's gonna push it out like you know and so not thinking about that without a team that can think about that is the downfall of a lot of people you know which is why you need a team yeah everybody needs a team but especially if you're an artist because I'm sure that many artists out there, y'all know who you are, many artists out there want to be able to put that 200%. And that's how you get the best art. But you also need to know that there are people who will do, and you need to allocate these people to do the things that you personally might not want to do, you know? And if you don't want to pay them, get somebody and build from the ground up. (laughs) But you're you're absolutely right about the team part. I I struggle with that because a lot of cases I didn't I didn't trust people mm-hmm. um, and I just I just felt like I could just do it all on my own mm-hmm. um, I had a very like independent attitude I still do but I, I have learned and grown a lot so I've learned to relax that mm-hmm. and to um, that it's okay to need help yeah. it's okay to ask for help yeah. um, but I will say as far as team building goes do the work on yourself of and course. do yourself Okay. Because you want to attract the right people. Yeah. You don't need a hundred wrong people around you. This facts. Um, but five solid good people. Mm. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the right track. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, everyone starts off at different places and stages in life, but um, if you're starting off younger, like I did, like in, in you know my 20s, like. You got to know yourself like you have to do the work on yourself so you can even attract the right people. Mm. Um, Speak on that for me, like doing the work on yourself. Right. Well, give me an example. Give me an example. Make sure that you perfection doesn't exist. Right. OK. Um, but make sure you're the best version of yourself. OK. Make sure that your mental is in good shape. Mm. Make sure that your emotions are intact. Make sure you've done healing that's needed Mm -hmm. um make sure that you've dealt with yourself because a lot of times because you know a lot of everybody has a story yeah a lot of times personal things that may have happened to you or burdens that you carry you don't think affect you because either you know you think you're you're too strong to let it fade you or you think because you don't acknowledge it that it's not there Mm -hmm. but you don't know what bleeds out of you faces of other people for example i I mean i could take something as simple as let's just say let's just say drinking Mm -hmm. um you know call anybody at all if that's you know that could be something let's just say that's something that you enjoy yeah socially 
you know, um, intimately, whatever the case may be. Yeah. If it is a situation or a case where, and you may not realize it, you use it as a coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. So you kind of use it to mask other things and hide things. Your issues and pains are still there. Mm-hmm. So just because you're in a group with people and you're having fun, and, you know, you're being social, and you're drinking and all the other kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that that stuff isn't bleeding through. Thanks. And you want to just always put your best self forward because you don't know who's watching. Exactly. Especially in this day and age. See, I mean, even when I was in college, yeah, I'm not, I'm not old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, social media was there, but yeah. it was still a time where people enjoyed the moment mm. more so than like recording it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. Now it's just, it's all this. Yeah. You know, but at that time, you know, people still enjoy people's company you could you could go into a party and everyone's dancing yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah even though you know, still had social media but still for sure i had a um a high school uh teacher say once who used to tell us a lot mm-hmm. um, you never get a second chance to make a first impression facts so, facts one thing that i want to talk about right is grand rising <laughs> y'all don't know what that is however so whenever she texts in the quote-unquote morning times he says grand rising so what's up with that um so i'll give just like a general um basis of it okay you can go deeper you know if that's what you choose but basically when you wish someone a grand rising you are essentially hoping that they have the best day okay they could possibly have and Basically, that they enjoy every moment of that day to the fullest. Okay. And they make the most of their time. Huh. So that's, I mean, that's like really. It's different. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. So um, I lived in Atlanta for like seven years. Okay. I moved back to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Where I'm from. And I met a lot of different people. Some <laughs> of them characters. Okay. Um, <laughs> I imagine. I a lot along the way. Mm. Um, and so that's where I got introduced to it. And what even got me interested in just adopting a different greeting was so i'm i'm kind of a stickler about words okay i never understood how you have morning and you have morning Mm -hmm. they're both spelled the same which then indicates different meanings but we all know that words have power it has power yes we basically speak spells when we say words for sure spelling spelling words yes you know yeah so I know the difference between morning and morning when I read it because I see the different spelling. But when I say it to you, there's no difference in what you hear. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, and of course, this is English language. It's not the only word like that. But how do I wish someone a good morning? What's good about morning? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. See, <laughs> and it's actually really funny that you say that, right? One, okay, so morning and morning. The only difference is the you whenever they write it. However, I completely agree with you. And so I actually started, like I learned about this maybe uh, two months ago, something along those lines, whenever I really started paying attention to spelling. Um, And I was down a rabbit hole, like I often get into uh, on YouTube. And so was talking about the power in words and and letters and um, symbolism and all these wonderful things, right? If y'all don't know about it, y'all definitely should look it up because it will change your life. So when I looked at morning, right, because that was one of the entry ones that they were talking about and saying good morning, right? Thinking about how morning has the symbolism of death or at least us mourning death. In saying that to people every single time, multiple people, probably hundreds of people every single time in the morning, right? And to say that this doesn't have any correlation to quote unquote like death is really weird to me, you know? Because like you said, your ears don't distinguish, you know? And so, even though you might write something differently on paper, right, your brain is still hearing morning, right? And so if you want to look even deeper into these different words, et cetera, et cetera, it changes your whole perspective on talking. It makes you more cognizant and more particular about what you are trying to say. Because 
the stuff that you say to different people and older people always said this to me and just in general where there's life and death in the power of your tongue you know and so when you consistently say negative things to another person then you're bringing you're attracting that negative energy to that person you know and so while some people might say that they don't believe in energy etc etc I want to offer a question to people, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever you say, I like this person's vibe, let's break down the word of vibe, right? Because vibe is an abbreviated word of vibration. And if you like a person's vibration, what do energy does? It vibrates. So, quick synapses. Anyways, thinking about that and going into the root meanings of things, right? I started learning Latin recently because a lot of our words are derived from Latin. You can learn a lot of different languages from just having a foundational understanding of Latin, you know. And so when I was in middle school, uh, I was in my mom had the fortunate opportunity to teach at a very higher echelon middle school. Right. Uh, we were lower middle class, et cetera, et cetera. But she still had the opportunity because she was a great teacher. And so thus, I also had the opportunity to go there um, And so one of the basic classes that they required us was to learn Latin. And I thought about it, and, you know, I paid attention a little bit, of course, whatever. But I thought about it later in my life of why. Why do you require that, you know? If I were to look at other different middle schools, I'm pretty sure that Latin is not even a, a forethought, you know? So why here in this upper middle class, maybe lower, higher class, right, why are you requiring that? And it's because, well, in my opinion, it's because once you have a deeper understanding of that, um, you can base different uh, brands, you can base different meanings of that in your life and consistently attract this energy, right? Because Latin is one of the root languages. So if you want to cut out all the fluff, right, of what people have turned meanings of words into, when in reality, you can't change the meaning of a word. You just change what you associate the word with. So if you're changing the quote unquote meanings of it, let's just cut through all of the quote unquote associations and let's get to the actual meaning of this, you know, which is why, as you all know, the brand name is this artist, which just means God of art. Right. Because me personally, if I want to attract the higher most uppermost energy of art right the um, higher echelon of it right I want to consistently attract that and so while I can personally believe that in myself you get more whenever other people are saying and deriving and giving that energy to you you know so if other people are consistently calling the brand disartists right you're consistently attributing my brand with the most upper echelon of art you know I digress. <laughs> I thought that was really intriguing. You know, you missing that because that shows that other people do listen and think a little bit deeper, yeah. you know? Well, a part of my uh, journey to discovering self and just improving and growing, um, I learned that I have to be intentional with my words and intentional with my actions. So, um, I mean, I try not to be... I try not to be that person that picks apart everything. <laughs> you know, not, I yeah. try not to be that way. But um, I, I was, you know, the person you spoke of briefly that just, I used to speak a lot of, like, negative words and talk yeah. about one of myself. Just yeah. Because that's what, like, I was used to seeing, like, around me. Like, even now with my family, I'm learning to have more patience with them. Because I'm just in a different space than a lot of them are, but I started to see it. I started seeing how that pattern affected us. Mm-hmm. And and some some of my relatives may have been intentional. Mm-hmm. Trying to cause harm. Yeah. Trying to uh, project negativity. But then others just weren't. It was just what they were used to. Mm-hmm. And so I just had to realize like I'm speaking a lot of things on myself. Yeah. With the words that I'm using. I use towards myself, about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to stop that. Yeah. Like I said, I've always been a stickler for like grammar and words and, and just things that I hear. But that forced me to just think of my responsibility, I guess. A responsibility? Yeah. That's different. That's yeah. different. 
So what entails this responsibility? Is it just yourself or is it uh, teaching others? More than teaching others. Of course, it it helps in my process. For sure. Growing and changing and evolving and just being the best version of myself. But I would say more than more than teaching people. Teaching people is a part of it, but mm-hmm. speaking it into people. Mm. Being that person that if, you know, no one's told you that, you know, you're amazing at this. You know, let me be the first person to tell you that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're good at this. This brings out your smile or, you know, this looks, you, you look great at this. You know, yeah. This looks good on you. Just, yeah. Just pouring it into people. Mm-hmm. Positivity. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Trying I, to make it contagious. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't think people really realize how much they're missing positivity until they get it, you know? Hearing a compliment from a stranger, right? And I love this, and I try to do this as well. Hearing a compliment from a stranger, just saying or complimenting something that you might not have thought about or thought was so minuscule, does something to your emotion, to your mood, you know? Towards your perspective, towards yourself, you know? If somebody said, hey, and you're just, let's say you're having an okay day, right? And so you have on some regular clothes, et cetera, et cetera. But somebody says, hey, like, I really love your locks, you know? Like, they look really nice, you know? That makes you feel just a little bit better about yourself. And that attracts a little bit more of that positive energy that you are having a lack of, you know? You can't do everything on your own, which is a repeat of the conversation we were having earlier. A lot of the different things that people are trying to understand about life and about themselves, et cetera, et cetera, is mirrored, you know, is mirrored in reality, is mirrored in the, uh, I guess, the situations that you end up having with other people, with businesses, the, the observations that you end up seeing, right? You can piece apart your own life by looking at somebody else's or looking at how a business operates, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Because like we were talking about, this is a cycle. And whenever you understand that, then your understanding of life gets a little bit easier. But whenever things get easier, you feel better. You feel more positive, you know, because there's so much that we stress about, which brings negativity. Stress is a negative emotion, you know. And so whenever we start kind of holding stress on a billboard, like we're proud of it, why are we proud of something that is negative you know we're making and associating going back to words we're associating stress with positive not knowing that stress is still going to be negative whenever we talk about it the little things (laughs) but so I, i like that you know you're having that observation you know and still spreading that with people regardless of teaching them or not you know because like I said, a lot of people really appreciate that. And then you start to become the person who brings positivity, right. which makes other people want to be around you more. Right. I, and I noticed that, like, that myself, I would always just feel so down you know, from that, like, angry, just mm. really just a mess. But it was my own, it was on my own words. Yeah. Which, you know, came from my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I just had to, I had to shift all of that, mm-hmm. change all that stuff out. Like, Kick some stuff out. Because <laughs> it, um, it just wasn't healthy. Yeah. And um, like the more I meet people and have conversations with people, um, you get amazed at where the negative views and thoughts and words come from in their life. Mm-hmm. Like some people get it from their parents, the people that you would think would love them the most. Yeah. Um, that's not the case for a lot of people. Yeah, they they hurt them. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. It, it yeah. So, and then you don't you don't realize like outside of that you just start to you take all that in and it just becomes the way that you you know the way that you view self and the way you speak to yourself. Exactly. It's, it's a bad it's a bad habit. And yeah. It, it it just it's not good. No. That affects your relationships with people. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> like your child, your childhood is so pivotal to creating the person that you are. Yeah. You know? 
And if you had an unstable childhood, if you had a childhood filled with negativity, um, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy to where you start believing that I am this bad person. Um, I can't talk. I can't communicate. Like, I'm not amounting to anything, et cetera. Like, you start to push forth this or create this image of yourself, you know, that you believe in and other people are also starting to see because that's what you're exuding, you know. And whenever you try to get into a relationship, because everybody, let me not say everybody that's generalizing, but <laughs> most people want relationships, at least some type of like communication with others, right? Um, or communicative beings. And so whenever you try to get into that relationship with a person, regardless if it's intimate or not, and this is the image that you're exuding of, I'm not gonna be anything, I'm a bad person, I'm an angry person, um, et cetera, et cetera, then that's still negativity. That's an aura of negativity that you're carrying around. And it's going to negatively impact your relationships to where people are going to consistently either have problems with you or they're going to run into arguments or people are going to not want to be around you and that makes you feel bad because you're not understanding you just want love you know and not knowing how to love or at least not being given love in the moments where you're vulnerable makes you hard to where it's hard for you to give love because everybody wants it but if you're not giving it then why does another person want to be around you right. you know eventually you're gonna i mean probably very quickly you'll start participating in those types of behaviors yeah which is only going to bring it to a reality and it doesn't necessarily mean that's because who you are that's who you convince yourself to be exactly exactly which is sad yeah. that's why we have so many people in the prison system yes you know, or dead. or dead, or dead. There's a lot. There's a lot more dead. <laughs> and so, thinking about that, like even looking at the people that I used to know, right? And I'm not crazy old or anything like that. Um, but still, I've seen a lot of people die. You know, or at least end up in the prison system, et cetera, et cetera, to where you really see how lucky you are to still be here. You know, and like I was talking about earlier, the different paths in life. It's a lot of different opportunities that other people can get, even if you're in the same room. There's a lot of different paths that you can end up with. And so you can be from the same neighborhood, from the same high school, et cetera, et cetera. But because you had a particular passion, right? because you chose that you liked math a lot and you wanted to really be good at math, et cetera, et cetera, even though it wasn't cool or whatever, right? These things take you on different paths than the other person sitting right beside you, you know? And so that's a joy. That's a, that's, that's something to at least, um, be thankful for, you know? So, <laughs> sorry, let's get off of that. <laughs> So I want to actually, because I did compliment your logs, because I do feel like they look great. Yes. So how did you start your log journey? Um, so it's been four years now. I started I started them myself, and for the most part, I maintain them myself, but I do have lock tissues. It's amazing. Okay. Um, hold on, hold on. We can't we can't gatekeep the lock system. What, are we going to plug that in? What's up? <laughs> um, my name is Gina. Okay. <laughs> she is out of Elizabeth City. Okay. She's... I can I can do like you know basic things with my hair you know mm-hmm. as far as like you know shampooing conditioning mm-hmm. when it comes to like styles and things yeah yeah Gina, Gina's got it. <laughs> okay that's what's up um, shout out Gina yes. <laughs> um, but I started them it's, it's kind of funny because I actually had to cut off all my hair really that's you okay. went bald well I've, I've cut off all my hair at least two or three times in my life wow that's crazy that's right bold I had locks I had platinum blonde because I wanted to grow my locks on okay. that color. Um, I was told by many people that it wouldn't come to kill me. Mm. Um, because it's damaged. Yep, uh, yeah. And, um, Don't bleach I, your hair, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not coloring it anymore. Uh, um, I've literally had every color that I've ever wanted. So, <laughs> this is what's up. Really? Because uh, I, I, 
I did once I grew them out, probably for about five months. Um, I did get them bleached all over because I got uh, fire red. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's a different look. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Mm. Yeah, so anyways, I had to cut off the Uh-huh. And I grew them, like, probably from this size. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You had the nubs. I did. Okay. I thought that I was preforming. Uh-huh. Um, some, some people thought that I was growing weeks. Some people thought, well, a lot of them thought I was from Florida. So, <laughs> like, you know, um, I just kind of, I just... Let them do their thing, but my inspiration was Lauren Hill. Really? So okay. I wanted them to look just like hers, not knowing that everyone's different. Yeah. Like everyone's hair is different. Facts. The pattern, curl pattern is different. Mm. Um, but I wanted it as close to hers as I could get. She was my lock inspiration. Okay. Um, but I told myself by 30 I was going to lock it. I always said that. I didn't really know I was going to do it, but I just always said, you know, at 30 I'm going to have locks. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> and I literally had every hairstyle in between. Really? Until then. Yeah. That's so, what's up, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait. First, I got two questions. <laughs> okay. So, what's one thing that you could say to people trying to start their locks? Okay. Number one, it is a lifestyle and not a hairstyle. Mm. So, be prepared to change mm. and grow and be open to it okay if you're just doing it for style because you think it's cool or because everyone else is doing it you're doing yourself a disservice okay um it's a lifestyle okay it's a journey it's a journey <laughs> it is and the ugly the ugly stage yeah the phase that they talk about is real <laughs> um <laughs> okay okay yeah like i wasn't confident during that time i used to at that time I used to make natural wigs, mm -hmm. um, and I would just kind of throw them over. Like, ah, you know, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's cute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all ain't going to play me. <laughs> and then, but there were times, I, and I more so put those on for, like, work. Mm -hmm. You know, still in banking. Okay, so, for um, sure. There's a... I had to know. I was about to say, is there, like, a no, requirement? No, but it just, it was a confidence thing on my part. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just... I had been natural a couple times, but I had kind of always, kind of always kept up with the trendier styles of hair. Mm. This at that time was was not trending. I'm not saying like I was the only person growing locks, but mm. it just, given that time, especially on social media, and then kind of just sort of where I was, as far as like living in Atlanta, that wasn't the thing. Okay. Okay. Got you. You know. Yeah. Um, I can definitely see how more yeah. people are now like yeah. having locks. You know, it's becoming more of a cooler thing. Right. Yeah, I can definitely see that. So I, I wasn't, and then if you did see people with locks, a lot of times they may have started before. So mm. You see the locks are down here. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, at that at that time, well, still now, you know, you can get lock extensions. Which. How do you feel? Let somebody. How do you feel about lock extensions? Um, it's a choice, but to me, that's cheap. Okay. Cheap okay. Now, I understand people who get their locks cut off and then they get them reattached. Uh -huh. That's still their hair. Okay. That's still a part of them. Gotcha. Um, but I'm the type of person, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna commit to it. Mm. So, and I, I came this close a couple times to lock extensions, and then that price, I was like, no, y'all had it. Dang, it's um, expensive? Yeah. <laughs> like so, time, you're gonna pay for, you gonna pay to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> at the time, like, Three inch extensions were going for two fifty. Three inch? Mm -hmm. Wow. Five inch extensions were going for five hundred. Wow. Mm -hmm. Half a band for five inches. Keep in mind, I started them myself. Yeah. And at the time, I was maintaining them myself. Yeah. Um. No. That's wild. Yeah. No. God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I could pay uh, five hundred dollars for five inches. Yeah. Now I mean. Going to a lot mm. learn how to do it yourself fine, but it just—I didn't want it like that. Yeah, I did. I did want to go through the process. All right, all right, all right. Um, I just didn't always feel. I didn't always feel pretty during the mm. Okay. Okay. Do you feel pretty now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And Got then, you. Then it was just—it was just different. I would say I was used, to, maybe used to getting more attention before I started my lock journey. 
when I started it and I was going through the ugly phase, mm. I got certain attention. Ah. So got attention from um, guys who had had locks yeah. or who were just more natural earthy men. <laughs> earthy is. <laughs> <laughs> What do we mean by earthy? What, it, what that's a weird word. Um, earthy. Natural. Okay. Part of nature. Um, okay, crystals. Well, yeah, maybe. Okay, for sure. But just just not worldly. Okay. Got you. Not materialistic. Yeah. Got you. So we we, we just did a whole thing trying to define earthy. But <laughs> Oh god, right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Did you like that? As far as the tenure part? No, like the different. I well, mm, two part question. Okay. So, the different, um, I guess, type of attention, mm -hmm. right? Was that different for you? Did you end up liking that? Yeah, I did. Gotcha. Because I felt like I felt like it was a more of seeing into me. Mm -hmm. Type of thing mm -hmm. than seeing outside of me. Like the attention gotcha. was more, it was just like, you know, you look good because, you know, you have your hair. Mm. Like other girls have their hair. Mm. So, you know, and, you know, you're in the clothes that other girls wear. So, mm. you know, you look at that time. Right. For sure. You look good because you look like everybody else. Yeah. You know, versus. All right, all right, all right. At that time, y'all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it stand out to me because. I see what you're doing. Yeah. I, I know where you're headed and where you're going. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. That meant more. Gotcha. Um, and it was never, look, I'm scared to say earthy. <laughs> <laughs> look, we defined it. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. More earthy men. Yeah. It was never, it was never like, let me hit on you type of thing. It was just like, you know, I see you, so like, keep going. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. You. Gotcha. It was just like, give a compliment and really yeah so yeah okay that's what's up yeah. that's what's up you know, it was it was more of a um it was more mature hmm. so i embraced it more mature yeah okay back again back again so when it comes to where you're at right now right you're a banker artist what is it that you're looking for what are the goals that you have for yourself Sorry, that's a little. <laughs> so, what I'm, I'm let's, okay, I'll start with what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, you know, do you mean in terms of another person or just in life? It doesn't have to be. How do you interpret the question? I interpret it as what I'm looking for in life. Okay. Yeah. Definitely peace on all levels. Mm -hmm. Personal peace, of course, peace within myself, peace with other people. Mm -hmm. And as long as I have that peace and I'm carrying that peace. Okay. Spread it. Yeah. <laughs> um, happiness, which is a part of that, it comes from that. Mm -hmm. um, good health, knowledge of self. Okay. Sure, and self sustainability. Um, self sustainability. Yeah, I was trying to find another word. For okay. Use it right. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. It's the internet, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, playing fair. <laughs> but just understanding who I am and understanding that I have already have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of unlocking it and knowing how to get to it, how to access it. Okay. How to use it effectively and positively. Okay. What's the growth that you've seen in that within yourself? So I don't go off on ten. Give me. Okay, so you say that you are trying to, or at least when it comes to your goals for yourself, you're trying to be more intentional. Intentional with what? I know we talked about words earlier, right? But in other aspects in your life, give me an example. Um, actions. So I know I mentioned actions and words. Mm. Um, to have a reason for things, to have a strategic plan. 
plan for things even if even if it all goes in the complete opposite direction but to just not to not live life aimlessly you know what i mean to gotcha just, to not be so carefree and careless and just you know i'm a butterfly <laughs> you know, it's, i mean it sounds good yeah and maybe at certain times in your life certain stages and ages it feels good but mm-hmm. to just have a focus mm-hmm. have goals and just have a reason for things mm-hmm. for everything i mean and, I, and i'm not saying you have to be so serious to where you're just like a stone wall yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You think age played a part in that? Age? Mm-hmm. Yes. The light switch went up at 30. I'm not going to lie. Really? It's really? It should. It better. <laughs> I'm telling you, it should hit different. Like, uh, you shouldn't be the same person at 31 that you were at 21. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not talking about you're funny. Yeah. You know, um, you like to laugh, you like to make other people laugh. We're not talking about things like that. Okay. We're talking about places you like to go, things you like to do, people you like to be around. Yeah. Um, talking about habits, behaviors, things like that. Mm-hmm. Because essentially, I'm still the same person as far as like my unique traits and qualities and characteristics. For sure. But I'm completely different in terms of how I choose to spend my time, mm-hmm. who I choose to spend my time with, mm-hmm. who I allow in my life, mm-hmm. um, and the boundaries that I set. Facts. Facts. Um, and the goals that I have for myself now. Mm-hmm. Um, now understanding how life is. Mm-hmm. And now knowing who I am. Okay. Because so, you don't want to make the same mistakes. No. You know? No. Time, like, you think you have so much of it the younger you are. Mm-hmm. Only to get older and realize it's running out. And I'm mm. not saying you have to think you're going to die tomorrow. For sure. But when you... And I'm never jealous of the race of anyone. I wasn't raised to be that way. I don't have that in me. Mm-hmm. But when I look at 21-year-olds now, mm-hmm. and I just see like how driven and how focused and how business-oriented and how they're not afraid to be entrepreneurs and take risks and stuff out there. Like, yeah, for sure. It's like, wow keep that up yeah do good with that do good by that Mm -hmm. you are going to be a force Mm -hmm. in five ten years yeah versus having you know played around or kind of not taking life as serious Mm -hmm. and just kind of i'm a butterfly you know until you get to a certain you know let's say until you get to your late 20s early 30s and then all of a sudden you're playing catch up yeah. Now, what's for you is for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, better late than never, but you just lost 10 years. Exactly. Or you just lost five. Exactly. I mean, and time is the one thing you can't get back. I don't care how wealthy you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how famous you are, how good looking you are, mm-hmm. how athletic you are. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Show me where you can go by time. Facts. Facts. And actually add it to your life. Like, just. I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. And so us. Because it's like, what? <laughs> they ain't got it yet. Nah, not at all. You know, you can buy body parts. Yeah, for sure. You know, we, we know that. Mm. You know, we buy hearts and stuff. Yeah. But the sand's still going to run out. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so it's time. Now I know the, the importance of time and it's just... It's so important. Time is all we have. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just it's the one thing we can't get back. We can buy a lot of other stuff. Mm-hmm. Be it real or fake. But when time is lost, it's gone. Exactly. Like, I'm it, not going to be 21 again. Yeah. Do you regret that? What part? Do you regret not making the choices that you're making now back then? Yes and no. Okay. Um, yes, because I could be a lot further than I am but no because I needed every single situation and experience and lesson mm-hmm. that life taught me mm-hmm. I needed it mm-hmm. because now even even if I had success then with the mind frame at that time I could have lost it all by now for sure okay for sure yeah or I could have it all by now and be a horrible individual Mm-hmm. And a horrible person. Mm-hmm. 
So I am exactly where I'm supposed to be in this moment right now. Mm. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. And I think that goes to the concept of everything happens for a reason, you know, and the things that you went through, the choices that you made at that point in time, all led you to this exact moment, all led you to uh, having the mindset that you have now, you know, in that mindset, let's say, OK, cool, it's at 30, et cetera, whatever. You're still there. And there are millions of people, billions of people who don't get there at all or who have to wait until 50 or 60 or until their deathbed and they're really here and they're looking back on their life and they said, damn, you know? So that's still a blessing. Even though, yes, with our generation, so many entrepreneurs, so many people who are out there trying to really make their passion into their life. Yeah. And so the amount of people that we can see really trying to create generational wealth is going to just change the whole world you know and you i guess being from a slightly different generation even still looking back on this generation or the ones after us and saying i'm proud means a lot especially to those out there you know because there's a lot of people out there who will say, uh, like, they'll, they'll kind of down the generations as they come, you know, and saying, OK, cool. Like, you don't know how it is to be like this or to be going through this, et cetera, et cetera. But we all go through our struggles, you know, and they all differ in generations for sure. But it's all struggling. That's a commonality, you know. And so whether you can particularly relate to it word by word or not doesn't negate the fact that it was still impactful to you and to me you know so to hear somebody say i do appreciate the fact that the other generation is making great strides you know when we had to walk right but we had to walk for them to be able to make great strides you know and there's no bitterness it's just proud yeah it's, it's evolution i talk i talk about this with my mom a lot because sometimes in some people from generation to generation you see the bitterness yeah because you see the jealousy yeah and it's sad because we should think about it as evolution and, and evolving yes you should want your children to go further and to do more and to essentially have more than you did yes because as a parent that should make you proud exactly you did something right exactly you know not to be jealous of that because we can do that my day mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. i'm sorry and because you could do it in your day now i can do it in my day. exactly exactly so the problem is selfishness is also a human quality a human trait i guess you could say yeah so it's this me 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 and my my mind thing mm -hmm. and we should think as a collective Mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. a lot of us still think of only self. Mm -hmm. um, but you could go a lot further, like like you talked about earlier, with the team of people. Yeah. With the help of like-minded people. Yeah. Um, and people who are just able to not only carry your dream and vision, but add to it. Mm -hmm. And the sense of multiply it, spread it, you know. Exactly. Exactly. So, you get a lot farther, like you said, you get a lot farther with help, you know, because you're going to get into places that you couldn't have gotten into beforehand with the push of others. And like we were talking about earlier, everything is mirrored. So if you have a weight, right, let's say you can move this weight pretty easily, et cetera, et cetera, right? Maybe with a little bit of oomph, but you can move it around. But how easier is it to get that weight from one side of the room to the other side of the room with three other people right. helping, you know? That's a great, that's, that's a great example. Because I'm just thinking of, you know, you can, the faster part, right? That just being you, mm -hmm. you can, you know, just muster up all this, like, energy. Yeah. And just push it. Yeah, just you know, shove it. Good time. Yeah. You know, fat, that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> but now do that to the other side of this room. Exactly. At the same speed. Exactly. The same Exactly. It's not, gonna it's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know? So that's why I said like life is a mirror of life. You know? It's all a cycle. And so when people understand that, people can realize that your life gets so much easier. 
But, so, I think there's a good episode. <laughs> but I appreciate everybody for watching, um, for listening. Thank you so much. And of course, of course, of course. Uh, do you want to plug in any socials, any businesses, whatever? Okay, not yet, not yet, yet. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank everybody for coming. Thank everybody for listening. And uh, yeah, it's your host, Makara. We love you. Boom.